difficulties with transition on young animals is it'll often be day one is a small amount of beak that we said before. It's about half a kilo for these small ones. But you might be stuck on day one for a while. So you might do day one, day one, day one, day one, day one for a week. So you're only giving them half a kilo for a week until they're all eating, until your whole defensive line is moving up. Right, and, and that's where a lot of people get transition wrong in beak. Because they think they're eating because they see them on the leaf. They don't pick up on the fact that there's usually a lot of supplement. They can go away and do something else. And in those cases, as you move up, once you start increasing that amount, you run into the same problems we did before. There'll be a bunch over here that are good eaters and the good doers. They get burnt, their room and lining gets burnt, and you've just taught them, do not eat a lot of fodder beef. And you'll never make any money out of them again. Very strong relationship with beef, <coughs> with, between their intake and the amount that you leave behind. So, and I don't mean by leave behind, utilization so what I don't mean is wasted so with beef today we've got the line here let's say tomorrow for this distance we were going to move it to here this is a hundred percent right I should go back once they're after transition when I'm up and running I should be able to look over that line and there's 25 percent of what I gave them up here in yesterday's break now the day before we'll have about 10 percent the day before we'll have about five percent so I should be able to look down and see three days if I can't see three days, I'm not feeding them enough, right? Behind them, it'll be a billiard table. Now tomorrow when I move it, everything moves forward, if you see what I mean. So now this is 25%, 10, 5, and it's gone. And the whole thing moves up. So the two problems that happen if people, once they're on to transition, which is straightforward and very easy to do, the two problems that people find with beef, because we're weighing them, unlike dairy, unlike even dairy replacement heifers, if you're going to make good money out of beef, you've got to, the one thing that you have to maximise is intake. You really have to maximise intake. So the two things that go wrong are, first and foremost, people don't leave enough behind. You know, I've worked these programs, I do, most of my work is on farm. And I've come to believe um, with, with the farming community, it is genetic. Right? There's something deep, deep, deep in the genes of farmers. They can't see that waste, even though they want to and they tell their hand to move that line open, it just comes back all by itself. Right? And they do it again, it comes back all by itself. Right? You know, um, 700 grams in the first year is a, is a terrific result. There's no getting around that. A lot of people don't get that. They get 300 grams for a year or so, maybe two years and then move up. 700 grams are real, is, is a great result. But for these sort of size and shape, and for all of you, if you've got good weather and these sort of systems, you should be hunting for that kilo of live weight gain a day. And the reason why that's important, because the, the system that's made money for us in New Zealand is we've chopped a year off raising beef. So the average steer, grass-based steer, just like you, just like you, the average grass-based steer in New Zealand is slaughtered between 26 and 36 months old. Now they're spring-born, so that means that I pay for two winters to feed them, you see? Now if I can take that second winter off them, that I don't have to pay for them anymore, what I've effectively done is double my stocking rate. So what we do with these, they're born in spring, we get them in autumn, we put them on grass for three weeks, we transition them carefully, they have 130 days, so that means they start for us They'll start somewhere in late March or April, and then they'll be uh, effectively four or five months on beef right across that autumn and winter period where historically we couldn't put any weight on them at all. So they'll be right across that period, and then we plan enough beef to make sure, real sure, that we, we don't, they don't come off the beef until there's grass all around them. So they have no check when they come off it, right? They'll do a kilo of live weight gain, if you get it all right, they'll do a kilo of live weight gain on the beef. So if we're starting at 270, we've got 130 days, we're at about 400 kilos when we come off. They're now big, they can eat, they go out on grass, spring grass always, everything likes to eat spring grass and they do well. Typically they'll shift to about a kilo and a half live weight gain a day at that one on the spring grass and might be different in Wales, I doubt it. I think God gives everybody 90 days of spring grass. Even if you're in outer Mongolia, you get 90 days of spring grass. You might get more, but usually you don't get less. And so 90 days of that puts them in the frame.
that by for us by the time it's Christmas we're normally at that we want a 300 kilo carcass that's our hunting ground and a 300 kilo carcass on beet is a 530 kilo animal so the yield on the Europeans is about 58 percent 57 58 and the yield on the British is about 56 and a half so for us our target live weight is about 530 kilos